Hey Brompton fans, Brompton today reached the sub eight kilo and seven and a half kilo barrier. They call this the T line, I assume for titanium because the entire main frame is made out of titanium, which a lot of people anticipated. Uh, it's also two kilos lighter than the P line. I found these photos posted on the Facebook Brompton bicycle group, and it turns out all the black parts you see are carbon. And you know that Brompton already has a titanium fork, so I expect this black fork, this carbon fork, is lighter than the existing titanium fork. Um, the seat stem is made out of carbon, but it has a thin layer of quote-unquote steel armor. And that's actually done out of necessity, because if you were to move the seat post often, which is what you do as you fold, uh, it will wear out the um, carbon tubing, hence the very thin layer of steel. The seat saddle, I heard, is, is also carbon-based and it also has carbon rails. They also went through the trouble of getting lighter inner tubing called tubolito. I recognize the orange valve immediately. Um, these are 34 grams. Uh, compare this to the Schwabe uh, inner tubing, which is 90 grams. Uh, having two of these together, you would save over 100 grams of weight. Um, there is there is a bit of a warning though. These uh, S tubos that they use um, are prone to harm by potential heat, so um, it's not meant to go through long hard breaks. Or if you happen to be cycling through India at forty degree weather, definitely consider changing them out. Mud guards are plastic. The original ones are plastic, but they use the titanium stays to ensure that they're light as possible. Um, this really implies that you should keep dirt away from this because otherwise they would have removed this as well, but they didn't. They also replaced the folding pedal with a quick release and you could see that by the red button. Um, I assume they did this to reduce the weight again um, because the folding pedal is definitely more convenient or faster than having to pull this out and then storing this here. I also assume that they're worried about increasing the folding time. So this thing is actually magnetic, which is clever to make it quick. So there's a rainproof cover for this. You gotta open this and then you gotta put it in. You can see from the comments that people who saw this uh, really bashed into the aesthetics of the welding. This comment here actually is in the right direction where they're considering other reasons. There's gotta be reasons why they have the welds that way. And it's to balance the weight, the strength, and the feel. What he meant by feel is probably the flexibility of the frame. I'll throw in another consideration, which is balancing out the manufacturing cost. Because if you look at this, the, the bottom part here is blue. And here, which is the crossbar that they put in, is showing a bit of stress. So that bottom part is stopping the stress from the crossbar from spreading. The joins here are smooth, there's no welding, and this implies that this is done with injection molding. They could choose to inject mold the entire thing, like all the way up to here, and weld it at the top, but this could be extremely expensive. Um, they could, you know, instead create a single bar, crossbar here, and then weld it here instead to make it look nicer versus welding it here. But obviously they did this because this is a stronger weld than this. Uh, they're not, I mean, they're not blind. They definitely want it to look good, but due to strength or the flexibility in the previous comment, they chose to weld it here. You see that at the very top of the bar that it requires a much wider surface area to attach it. So if they were to weld it at the bottom, where the joint is, they would need much more space, which they don't have. I notice also that there is a missing weld here in this fo photo. So I do have so, so some suspicions that this could be photoshopped because it there's a there's a clear welding line um, in all other photos, and that includes you know this uh, CAD model here. 
I found this photo in a major cycling publication. You could see the crossbar is smooth there. And you could also see that it is smooth in their marketing material as well. And I have a feeling this is their pre-production line and until they realized that it was costly to produce something like this. And then this is why we ended up with a launch video showing all the welds existing in the crossbar. I was also impressed with how they're trying to minimize weight by hollowing out certain areas. So this is the bottom of that join. And like he said, we're adding material where it's needed and taking away where we don't need it. So this blue bit is probably thicker than this bit where they want the flex to be here and then the strength to be here. This used to be the area where they punch in the frame number and they decided to hollow this out to save weight. Holes in the frame bother me because it rains a lot in England. And then if they were to put a hole here, I mean, the rainwater can go in and then collect here as well. I mean, these are made, this, this frame is grade nine titanium, which is marine grade, which is anti-corrosion, which is great, but you still don't want, you know, a pool of water collected inside. I was checking if there was a hole at the bottom, but you know, these things are curved, so it could go in and then it'll collect. Um, so I'm curious how, that turns out so there's a hole here in the frame this is the where the crossbar is so perhaps it's going down it's meant to like funnel down and leak down and what about this hole like what when it rains i mean will there be a pool of water here or going into the head um yeah these are questions i have here's some additional weight saving features just like the p-line they kept the external hub which is lighter then the internal hub uh, by Sturmy Archer, that's, that's nearly a kilo. And this one I estimate to weigh about 300 grams because the equivalents out there by the third party, are, by third party uh, producers are roughly about 300 grams. Um, the derailleur is 60 grams, so it's about 360 grams um, in total compared to a kilo. They also went for hollow pin chain, uh, which is lighter but at the same time you're riding through mud you will collect mud through these things and it's not fun to clean um well be prepared to use your old toothbrushes uh they also decide to cut weight on the easy wheels as well which uh there are of course some sacrifices to that because you could see that the rubber ring is relatively thin it means it could only go on smooth surfaces if you were to hit a rock and there's not enough clearance I mean, a small pebble even, it would chip this away. I definitely prefer the old Easy Wheel, which is which has thicker rubber, it's higher clearance. And the reason why they wouldn't put, you know, a thicker rubber here is because once you turn this, if this rubber is too thick, this will definitely pop off, which I've seen in the third party versions. Uh, they also included the P-Line suspension block, which I heard is stiffer and they could afford that or actually is a good balance to the titanium frame which also offers some flexibility the specs indicate that this is a hollow axle um, this is similar to shimano's holotech uh, axles and you could see the similarities of the bottom bracket with the spindle on the outside you see that silver thing over here correlating to that and what this is it's a lighter higher performance easier to maintain axle and bottom bracket configuration. It's just modern bicycle technology. This is a cool bit of technology where they are laser etching the logos onto the bike. Um, this is very cost saving for Brompton. You don't have to buy any more stickers. The technology is used in fruits and veg. I've seen that uh, printed onto the skin. I mean, they used to use stickers. Um, this is definitely the way forward when it comes to putting logos onto products. Brompton is definitely aiming to compete against the Hummingbird, which came out several years ago, uh, having the title as the lightest uh, folding bike. Um, it is 8.2 uh, kilos for the multi-speed, and it uses a Sturmy Archer uh, internal hub. Um, the single speed version is 6.9, so it hasn't quite beaten it yet with the stripped down version. So uh, it still holds the title. Um, Hummingbird can easily swap this to, you know, an external hub and make this lighter. Um, bring it down to 7 kilos if it wants to. And this has a lot of cool features like a carbon belt drive.
Here are the specs of the T line. You got the one and the urban. The top, uh, I, I took out the top specs as the different ones. Um, you get, of course, mud guard, multi gears versus single gear. And this is the features that they share in common. So the $4,000 question is which one should you get, the Brompton Electric or the Brompton T-Line Urban? You could definitely get either. Um, if you top off with another two grand, you could add an arc kit to the titanium, as in electrify it. Or if you wait a few months, spend about one grand or less and get the new switch kit, which is a lot more compact and a lot lighter, which would complement that titanium bike. Um, and you could have an electrified titanium bike that could be less than 10 kilos, which is amazing. It really comes down to the hill situation. Can you overcome the hill with the titanium bike? If you can, definitely get the lighter one because on a flat, you could definitely surpass 15 miles an hour, which is the speed limit of the electrified Brompton on all bikes because that's the legal limit. When it comes to maintenance, of course, the electric Brompton, which is more complicated, will likely to require a bit more investment, time, replacement of consumables. And in, during transitions, let's say from riding to walking to carrying it around, having a lighter bike is definitely much more convenient. How many, just think about like what floor do you live on? Does it have a lift? If you have any more questions, just leave in the comment box below. I hope you enjoyed this uh, meta review. Hopefully I could test ride this and I could actually give a proper review. If you like these reviews, just uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.